Hello, everyone. And uh, this is going to be a, a small lecture on the very last readings of our course um, before your final papers do. Um, this is a part of the class where we sort of look forward into the present and the future, which according to Kurzweil are very difficult to separate, which you're going to find out about when you do these readings. So the two pieces we're looking at is Reinventing Humanity by Ray Kurzweil and AI's White Guy Problem by Kate Crawford. So, and neither of them are very long, but they're both very, very interesting and contemporary, so. Um, so, Ray Kurzweil is a very much a leading thinker in technology today. All right, now that I put his biography in here, as you can see, and it's very, very long, but the main thing to notice here is that he's an award-winning technologist. He has invented many devices and technologies that we use every day today, like speech recognition technology, you can notice that. You notice that there are text to speech, you ever you know, talk and then it writes. He invented that originally, but like decades ago. He's currently um, the head of engineering at Google of all places, right? He's published seven books. He's just a major player in technology. He's a very important figure who wrote this book, this article we're gonna look at today, so. Um, Kurzweil is known as a technological optimist. An optimist is someone who sees the good in all things, right? As opposed to a pessimist who thinks things are bad. He's a technological optimist. So he has complete confidence that the developments of technology will lead to an increasingly good life for humankind. He sees only good things about technology. If we develop artificial intelligence, it's gonna be only better for us, for instance. No worries about what could go wrong. He's just Hardly ever thinks about it. He thinks it's only going to be great because people make it, okay? Now, many people have doubts about either that the things he thinks will happen can happen, like can this really happen, or if that it'll be as good as he says it will be, right? So the things he thinks are going to happen, some people don't even believe will ever happen. Like, for instance, uploading your mind to a computer. He, many people just don't think that's possible. He thinks not only it's possible, but it's going to happen, and it's going to be great. So a lot of people don't agree it's gonna be as good as he thinks it'll be. He thinks it's gonna be great. And then most importantly for us right now, he thinks these great things that can happen are gonna happen really soon. So even if people believe it can happen, they don't think it's gonna happen as soon as he says. So an optimist in all three ways, they can happen, they're gonna be great, and they're gonna happen soon. And he has critics on every one of those, either way. So he's a, that's what I mean by an optimist. But this thing about how soon it's gonna come is very important, right? So how long the developments take is an important part of his argument. He uses this term singularity to make the case that, one, technologies are being developed faster. They're coming faster and faster. And I think most of us realize that's probably true. I think it's true. And two, that the rate of development is getting faster. Actually, the, it's not just that it's happening faster, but the faster itself is getting faster and faster. Okay, so that's two different things. And to get a sense of this, he compares arithmetic growth to exponential growth. So you have to have an idea of exponential growth. So I went and found a slide online to help explain this idea of exponential growth. All right, so here's a chart, a graph, I should say, that describes two kinds of growth, two kinds of curve. Arithmetic growth, which is that straight line, that's linear, right? That's like when one and two and three and four and five and six and seven, right? That's straight up. And you can predict that line perfectly well all the way into the future. You can see that. Um, and some things do this, but the one that we care about more is exponential growth. Exponential growth is like one to two to four to eight to 16 to 32 to 64, on and on. You see how quickly the numbers get large? That's that curve that gets sharper and sharper. The numbers get or stay small at first, then all of a sudden they get really large. They get really large. So this kind of thing is often in uh, populations, right? When populations grow, Two bunnies have four bunnies, four bunnies have eight bunnies, eight bunnies have 16 bunnies, 32 bunnies, 64 bunnies, and suddenly thousands and thousands of bunnies like really fast, exponential growth. And if you recall back in Darwin, Malthus made the case that because populations grow that fast, there's never gonna be enough food for everyone. And bunnies, wolves, people. And so therefore you're gonna have death, lots and lots of death. And that death, it means there's a competition for resources because there's not enough for all the bunnies, wolves, and people. So uh, bunnies, wolves, and people have to compete for what's there. And whoever 
competes the best reproduces. And that's the force for natural selection. All right. Um, so that's exponential growth, right? So Kurzweil believes that exponential growth is like an is exponential. And I mean, I'm sorry, technological growth is exponential. As in, it took thousands of years to invent a car. It took thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of years to invent uh, agriculture. A few thousand years to invent a car. A few decades to invent a computer. A, a decade to invent the smartphone. A, a year and then a month and the stuff gets faster and faster, right? That's what I mean by the rate of change is changing faster. Now, notice the curve as it gets, if you extended it to the next, look, look see at the bottom, zero, two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. Now picture 12, where would the but, that dot be for 12? It'd be way, way up high. And how about 14? It'd be way up high. It'd be like a straight line going straight vertical. That would be an infinite line of perfect verticalness. Like, how could you get faster if it's infinite? It'd be infinitely far away, that next button, right? The next, like by number 16, it'd be so far away that you couldn't even imagine it, right? That's a vertical, straight vertical line. That means infinite. That means infinite. And that means if Kurzweil's right, you have infinite technological growth. That state of infinite te technological growth, where a growth rate is so fast as to be infinite, is what he calls the singularity. And the singularity is beyond our ability to imagine. It's beyond our ability to imagine, all right? So it's gonna take a new kind of mind to imagine it, all right? And this is what, this is what Kurzweil is saying is about to happen. And his article is all about what hap what's going on in that world that that's about to happen. What are we doing? His article will talk to you about that. Now, so as I said, Kurzweil is a technological optimist. The other reading you have by Kate Crawford, a journalist, she's a realist of the present. You might even say a pessimist, but I wouldn't go that far. She certainly, she's just writing about today, and she's a realist. She tries to pay attention to, pay attention to what's really happening. So, so here's the thing you want to remember about Kate Crawford. Whenever we think about people making machines, we have to remember that people make the machines, which means that the assumptions and beliefs that people have go into the machine. Okay? So Crawford wants to point out, and you can see from the title, that there's one kind of person who programs computers pretty, pretty much in America today. Young white guys. All right? And these young white guys share a lot of beliefs, a lot of assumptions, a lot of values about race, about gender, about class, about money, about values, about what's important. And these influence and are built into the technologies that they build, the way they program computers. All right. And that's what Kate Crawford's going to talk to you about in detail. So we really want to get this. So keep these two views in mind, the sort of technological optimist about the positives of technology in the future. And what Craig Crawford is noticing about maybe a dark side that we're not noticing and not the most obvious dark side, right? So a lot of people think about artificial intelligence and think, oh, it'd be really bad. We'd have Skynet from Terminator or something like that. Crawford doesn't worry about that. She worries actually something much more realistic. Who's programming the computers and what values are they putting into that? All right. So I want you to keep those in mind as you read these two authors. All right. So that's everything. Best of luck to you.